think it's too early and too cold to start seeding? Think again. Carson Arthur is here with seeding secrets to get us prepared. Hey, Carson. Hey, Tracy. You're right. It's round two for seed starting. The last time we were together, we were talking about tomatoes. And if everybody paid attention, your tomatoes should be this size right now. But then I got all the emails from everybody else saying, what about the rest of the seeds? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay. So, I mean, I've heard that we actually could start ASAP. Uh, but what seed should we be starting if we want to start now? Well, if you live on the West Coast, this is not for you. You can dig in your garden probably in the next week or so. But for the rest of us Canadians who only get about 85 to 95 days of summer, it's really important to start seeds indoors that take longer than that to produce fruit. So right now we're going to talk about things like squash and broccoli, melons, cauliflower, cucurbits, all the things that need more time. These guys usually take about 90 days from the moment you plant them in the ground to the moment you actually get a squash or a fruit. And in my case, I only have 95 days of summer. Sounds terrible, but I don't want to risk the fact that these might get exposed to frost. So I'm going to start them indoors. I'm going to show you how to do it. That's the way to do it. Get it started inside. Okay, so you're really good about hacks. Show us some things around the house that might help us get our seeds started inside. So one of the best and most popular ways to grow seeds indoors is using a device like this. Now this one's purchased at a store and it's got a dome. And what's nice about the dome is the dome keeps the humidity inside. This is really important when you're initially starting your seeds. Once your seeds start to get leaves on them like this, you got to take the dome off. Otherwise the soil gets moldy. Now when we're talking about hacks, I don't know if you recognize this, but it looked an awful lot like a takeout container. Takeout containers do the exact same thing. It is a fantastic hack. So you're going to fill the bottom with soil. You're going to plant your seeds in it. You're going to leave the lid on it until the seeds germinate. Then you're going to take your lid off to allow airflow to happen. But this is perfect. We all have these, especially now during the pandemic. Oh, yeah. Finish your General Tao chicken and then go plant something in that container because those, yeah, they're, it's good if we can reuse those. Okay, so how much light, how much water are we talking about? How much do we need? So for tomatoes and peppers, when we were talking earlier, I talked about using a lot of light, and they need a ton. But when you're talking about squash and cucurbits and, and broccoli and cauliflower, they don't need as much. You can grow these just in front of a window because it's going to be a very short time that they actually live in the flower pot themselves. So the light isn't the big thing. Watering, though, is going to be very important. You need to keep these evenly moist all the time. Now I'm going to show you a really quick hack that I love. Now this is a little tiny tray. Obviously, you're not planting in this because your, your plants will grow out of this really quickly but you take a sheet pan like this and you put the tray down on top of it like that and you fill this pan with water like this we're gonna fill the whole pan right up with water all inside there and then you're gonna put a tea towel over the top of it the tea towel is now going to act as a wicking device the water is gonna wick onto the top then when you have your little flower pots you can put them right on top of here and what happens is the moisture that's underneath on the tea towel now goes into the flower pot itself you never have to water these. They will only get as much water as they need as they naturally use. All you have to do is keep water in the bottom of your cookie pan. Oh, that's so good. And then it totally self-regulates. I think that's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Self-regulating is the key here. You don't want them over wet. If they're saturated, that's when you're going to get mold and fungal growth. And that's what's going to destroy your seedlings. So by allowing them just to get the amount of water that they need, they're going to be significantly happier. Okay, your last tip is your biggest secret. What have you got for us? Well, Tracy, all actors know that your biggest fan is, in fact, a fan. And it's the same <laughs> for the gardening world. No, this isn't about blowing your hair back. This is about creating movement around. Whoa, big crash there. This is about creating movement, airflow around your seeds. This is so important for two reasons. One, it keeps the surface of the soil dry. That's where a lot of your fungal infections are going to form. And the second reason, by blowing gently over the top of the seeds. No, we're not talking gale force wind, just a nice breeze. It actually creates something called a banter. And a banter is a thickening of the stem at the base, at the bottom. This is so good for seeds that you're going to put outside because they're eventually going to be exposed to the elements. So just having a fan makes stronger seeds. Stronger seeds gives you more vegetables. Oh, we love that. Okay, all the celebs know that secret, and now all the gardeners know the secret as well. Listen, Cars, you, know you know my success rate with growing anything, except for the kids. They're still alive. But the plant's not so good. So tell me... 
What is the easiest, like most foolproof thing to start growing indoors so we can, you know, motivate people to stay with the growing of seeds? I'm glad you asked, and this is such a simple tip. All of these seeds right here, Tracy, came out of a butternut squash that I got at the grocery store the other day. These are dried. These are the fastest things to grow. Put them in the ground. I love getting them because they don't really require a lot of effort. They will take up some space, but you can start these early with the kids right now, and they will be perfect in time for the Victoria Day weekend, which is my last frost period. Absolutely. Okay, and when we are doing the seeding, how many seeds do we actually put in? So you're only going to do a couple of seeds per pot. Now, I'm glad you asked that as well. There are two things to remember. When you're seeding, you can start with a pot this size. Cucurbits and squash do not like to be transplanted. If you go anything smaller, they might actually outgrow the pot, and then you're going to have to move them multiple times before they get outdoors. So in this case, start with a little bit bigger of a pot, and when you're choosing soil, go for a lighter soil mix, something that the seeds can push through. Don't use topsoil. Your seeds will be happier, and you get bigger and heavier root development in a flower pot like this with a good potting soil. So did we get through this whole segment with you not touching poo? Kind of. Well, I think I might have just touched poo. <laughs> yeah, I did. Okay, good. Then it's a real Carson Arthur segment. Thank you, Carson.